What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to remove Plasti Dip. If you missed my other video on how to apply Plasti Dip, let me give you a recap. It's really short. Don't do it. It doesn't turn out as good as you think it's going to. I've bought a few cars with it. I've had to remove it. None of them ever look good. Uh, there really needs to be a cooling off period before you can buy Plasti Dip. It's a great way to protect your paint and make your car look like trash at the same time. I'm not a big fan. Maybe there are good jobs out there but every car I've ever had to remove it from, it was absolutely horrible. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Got some nice tiger stripes in there, and all those spots, that's just ordinary dirt. It doesn't wipe off very easily, and it seems to attract it. And, hear that nice smooth finish? It's like sandpaper. Not like the factory paint. There you go, that's just normal dirt, and that's after washing the car. Maybe you're removing it for different reasons had a little too much to drink, thought it would be a good idea, maybe you lost a bet with your friend, or maybe somebody just vandalized your car and did this. Well, I bought this one at an auction, and one of the reasons I got it so cheap was because it was Plasti Dip. I peeled it all off, I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you get lucky enough and they put it on correctly, it peels off pretty easily in big sheets. This is not correctly. This is actually really thin, so it doesn't come off so easily. So let me put the camera down and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you just start with a spot, either where the plastic dip is already torn or peeling, and just start going from there. If you can't find a spot, usually a corner works pretty good. Just start rolling it with your fingers so you make a little hole and you start tearing it apart. Kind of make a line with it then you can slowly pull it back and hopefully if it's thick enough it doesn't rip. This one's not coming off too bad. It's a little thinner than it's supposed to be. But not as thin as some of the other spots that are really going to give us a hard time. So we'll find some new methods for those. It was a hot day, so I wore my ventilated pants. Well, that and I'm poor and can't afford pants without holes in them. And just as a side bonus, it drives the afternoon crew nuts that I won't throw these away. They're really comfortable, so I'm going to keep wearing them. Just keep going along. When it does come off in sheets, it's kind of satisfying to peel it off. Of course, that satisfaction doesn't last very long. This turns into a pretty tedious job. We get most of it off, and we'll go back and get the little spots we missed later. Now onto the hood. The part that I was worried about is it seemed pretty thin when I started. Some of it you can actually see through when I peel it off. That's not thick enough. It should be a solid sheet. If you can see light through it, they didn't put enough on. Well, it came off pretty good until I get to the center. A nice big piece in the front here. Must have been where they started. And they got lazy. So I've removed the Plasti Dip from most of the car. And this spot right here is what worries me. I don't know what I'm gonna find in this little square here. So let's see what's in there. I got lucky on the hood. It started off a little rough, but it seems like they put enough on that it comes off pretty easily. It appears they must have nicked the Plasti Dip and it started peeling. They took a razor blade and cut out the old Plasti Dip and re-Plasti Dip that spot. So now I got some razor marks in the paint from where they did that. I think it would have been easier just to peel it off. 
feel the plastic dip off the hood and redo the whole hood, but clearly they don't make good decisions if you're plastic dipping a CTSV in the first place. Now if they put it on really thin like it is here, you just gotta keep kind of rolling it off with your fingers. And peel a little bit at a time. It's not gonna peel off in big sheets like it's supposed to. A word of caution, your fingertips are gonna get a little raw, so you might wanna do this in parts. Let's try our little molding remover and see how it works. Now on the edges here, where it's essentially just overspray, and it's really thin, can't really peel it off. We're just gonna use some degreaser here. You could actually pour this on the car and it would melt it all off, but it would just make a big mess. So it's easier to peel it off if you can. But on the real thin spots that aren't going to peel, this takes it off real easy. So it gets a little boring doing this. The best way to get it done quickly is to get someone to help you. Since Mr. Spotty is nowhere to be found and the afternoon crew is less than reliable, I just had to do it myself. So now there's two of me. Of course, Clone Scott doesn't seem to want to work very long. He's back again. And gone again. Probably making videos. Nice oh, back again. So we'll just keep peeling it all off. I left it on the door handles and in the moldings just to see what it would look like. It doesn't look good. We'll be taking that off. It was a little thin around the edges and on the wheels. So I just used some wax and grease remover to melt it off of there inside the door jams. And then went around and finished all the little spots that were left over. The top panels were a little thin and the hardest, either because they couldn't reach it with the spray gun or just the heat from the sun kind of melted it away. At any rate, the top panels were the worst part. So I did those first with the exception of the hood, because I was worried about that little square. I thought I'd put off what I didn't want to find for as long as possible. So I'm sure a few of you noticed this video isn't exactly recent. It was actually filmed in the summertime, about three years ago. And the reason I didn't make the video then was my old computer just wouldn't keep up. It wouldn't make all the edits and play back everything I needed to play back in order to do the cloning and everything else. So I couldn't do it. But if you follow me on Instagram, you know I just got a new computer. So, it was time to try it out and see what it would do. And it made the edits, no problem. So hopefully my editing goes a little quicker now. No, that doesn't mean you're getting more than one video a week. It just means there's a slim chance I might continue to make videos. So, until next time, headed out to pick up a bill.